Hi everyone, welcome to my Autodesk screencast. My name is Zan Ta and I work for Repo Products in Smyrna, Georgia. I'm an Autodesk certified instructor and hold many certifications in multiple Autodesk products for the AEC industry. I hope you enjoy my screencast. If you'd like to see more of my screencasts, please search for VAR 2015, that's V-A-R 2015, or my name. Please don't forget to give me a thumbs up after you watch it. In today's screencast, we'll be taking a a look at a couple things on scheduling in Revit 2016. Here I am in Revit. If I head over to the schedules in Project Browser, we can see, for example, we've got a curtain wall material takeoff schedule. In this schedule, I have one of my cells is colored red. And the reason it's colored red is because there is what is known as a conditional formatting has been set up. How do we work with conditional formatting in scheduling in Revit? If I look at the edit icon uh, button under formatting, we can see a list of all the fields that are available. For material area, if I select it, I have show conditional formatting on sheets, which means this schedule view, when it's placed on a sheet of paper, actually shows this conditional formatting as well. If I click conditional formatting, it will list for the condition that I want to set up. So for example, here I want to say if the material area field has a value that is less than a particular value, then color it a specific background color. And that's what I've done here. So if I switch this to say green, well, let's not use green. Let's use um, uh, this nice purple color. And we hit OK. You're going to see that conditional formatting is colored. The reason they set this up and give this to you so that it's easy for you to visibly see right off the bat which uh, conditions have been uh, not met for the design that you're working with. For example, maybe the uh, square footage of a room is not at the minimum size that's necessary for programming purposes. Another thing we want to look at in this screencast is when we look at room schedules, we can see in this particular room schedule, I actually have an embedded room schedule, in, an embedded schedule inside this room schedule. And if I click edit here under embedded schedules, you'll see it's for furniture. If I click embedded schedule properties, you can see that there's a couple of fields that I've placed in here, mark, type mark, family, cost, and count. And it's pulling that data out of the objects, the furniture objects, and displaying it as a schedule within the room schedule. And the reason they set this up and you have this capability is so that you can see, for example, from an interior designer standpoint, what are all of the pieces of furniture that's inside my kitchenette room, for example, here. Another thing I want to take a look at is, if we look here, we see floor finish, wall finish, ceiling finish, and count. I can click inside here and type whatever I want, say carpet, and hit enter, and it will input the data. That's all fine and dandy. We can do it for each one of these. But what if we have a room schedule that has, say, 10,000 rooms? It could be a, a hospital or it could be a, an airport. So it would be a very long and tedious task to manually input each one. However, what we could do if we want to is we can go over here under fields and we can introduce a new field in this section here to place over here on this column to add as a last column that will tie itself to these three columns F, G, and H. And what I'm talking about is what's known as a key schedule. So here I can right click schedules and quantities, create a new schedule quantity. I want it to be uh, based off of the room, so I'll select room, and instead of scheduling the building components, I'm going to do a schedule key. And the name of it is going to be, say, room uh, finishes. Hit OK. And I can automatically put in the base finish, the ceiling finish, the floor finish, and the wall finish. When I click OK, I have created a new schedule that is a room style schedule. I can insert as many as I want and call them whatever key names that I want. Uh, for example, say support spaces, say um, offices, say uh, utility spaces, and then lastly, maybe uh, gathering spaces. And the reason we do this is because I can click inside here and put whatever I want, say uh, carpet. And then over here for offices, I'll put in um, carpet is fine. Support spaces, I can put in here uh, tile. 
utility spaces, I'm going to put in uh, exposed concrete. So I'll do this for each one of these. I'm just going to say 2x2 two two, ACT. And we'll do this as 2x2 two two ACT for all of them for the sake of speed. We'll put four finish as being carpet for this one. Offices will also be carpet. This will be tile. Or let's do, yeah. And then utility spaces is going to be exposed concrete. So I'll put uh, exposed concrete. And then the wall finish, I'm just going to say painted. Now the reason I set up this key this way is so that now when I head back over to my room schedule, <clears throat> I head back over to fields, I can include the room finishes as a column. And because I've done this, I can click in here and pick any one of these objects that I've created. For example, for the studio space, I'm going to use it as a, a gathering space. I'm going to click this, and all that data automatically pushes in to the other columns within the room schedule. So you could do this for the kitchenette. We'll just do it as an office for now. Um, and so you can see all that data gets pushed into it. It's very fast. You don't have to worry about typing manually each one. And that's it. There's some a uh, couple of uh, scheduling uh, features that you may not be aware of within Revit 2016 uh, and, and in Revit in general. Thank you for watching my screencast, and please don't forget to give me a thumbs up.